Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I've got a lot of requests for a video on jet streams. So in this video, I'll be talking about what are jet streams and what are the different types of jet streams observed around our country. Jet streams are narrow bands of strong winds with speed more than 60 knots. These generally blow from the west to east across the globe. A jet stream is seen as a long corridor of high speed wind which is around 1500 nautical miles in length, 200 nautical miles in width and 12,000 feet in depth. The path of a jet stream is zigzag and it has strong vertical and horizontal wind shears. The vertical wind shear is about 5 meter per second per kilometer and the horizontal wind shear can be around 5 meter per second per 100 kilometers, meaning that the vertical wind shear is stronger as compared to the horizontal wind shear. There are four main jet streams observed on our planet and these are located around the height of the tropopause. The main jet streams are the two polar jet streams and the two subtropical jet streams. There is also an arctic jet stream and a tropical easterly jet stream that's observed in the northern hemisphere. These two jet streams are only observed during certain time of the year, unlike the other jet streams that are observed throughout the year. Now if we look at India, the subtropical and the tropical easterly jet streams pass over our country. I'll talk about both of these jet streams shortly. Let's now talk about how the jet streams are formed. So the jet streams are caused by large temperature differences in the horizontal plane. Or we can say that jet streams form when warm air mass and cold air mass meets. So as we know, the sun does not heat the complete earth uniformly. Areas near the equator are heated more as compared to the areas around the poles. Due to the general circulation patterns, wind shear is observed as the air rises and sinks in these areas. You can read about Hadley and Ferrell cells in the general circulation chapter. So the horizontal temperature difference is the only reason why jet streams move so fast across the earth. The bigger the difference between the warm and the cold air, the faster will this jet stream flow. So now as already mentioned, jet streams are observed in the mid to upper tropospheric levels and we know that our aircrafts also fly in this region. So these jet streams affect the ground speed of the aircrafts. Now let's say this jet stream was moving from west to east and we have an aircraft which is also flying in the same direction. It's going towards the east. So the ground speed of this aircraft will increase. So this aircraft will travel faster and reach early. Now let's talk about an aircraft that was going from the east to the west that is in the opposite direction of this jet stream. So the ground speed of this aircraft will reduce and now this aircraft will be flying slower and will reach its destination after a longer time. Okay, so the speed of the aircraft will be dependent on the direction it's going with respect to the jet stream. Now before we proceed further, there are some terms related to jet streams which we should know. So the first one is the axis of a jet stream. So let's imagine this is a jet stream and we know that this jet stream covers a large area both horizontally and vertically. So the wind blowing inside this jet stream will have different velocities. Let's say this line of wind is blowing at 70 knots and this is blowing at 84 knots. Similarly, this line of wind is blowing at 98 knots. Okay, now let's assume this line of wind which is blowing at 98 knots is the highest in this jet stream. So this will be the axis of this jet stream. 
okay so the line of wind with the highest wind speed inside a jet stream is the axis of a jet stream now the area along this jet stream axis with the greatest wind speed is known as the core of the jet stream okay so this core is the area around the axis of the jet stream and the wind speed along the axis of a jet stream may not always be uniform we can also have more than one maxima along an axis so the centers of high speed winds along the axis of a jet stream are known as jet streaks this jet streak is an area of maximum wind speed along the jet stream's axis and the maximum wind speeds in these jet streaks is around 100 to 200 knots range we have also observed winds as fast as 300 knots but that is considered as an upper limit on jet streak speeds now let's talk about the two jet streams we observe over our country the subtropical jet stream and the tropical easterly jet stream so this is the subtropical jet stream which blows from the west to east it is located around 27 degrees north at 36000 feet that is around 12 kilometers the wind speed here is observed to be around 100 to 120 knots and this jet stream exists throughout the year but moves with respect to the heat equator so over our country it is observed in the months of december january and february which are the winter months the reason for this jet stream is the temperature difference between the hadley and the feral cells so let's say we were flying from delhi to kolkata in the winter months we would experience tailwinds which is because of this subtropical jet stream now talking about the tropical easterly jet stream so as the name suggests this is an easterly jet stream that is blowing from the east to the west this jet stream is located around 13 degrees north at 45000 feet or 15 kilometers the wind speed here is observed to be around 60 to 80 knots which is much less as compared to the wind speed in the subtropical jet stream now this wind speed here is lesser because of its easterly direction as we can say it's opposite to the direction of the earth's rotation the earth rotates from the west to the east but this jet stream is blowing from the east to the west which is opposite to the direction of the earth's rotation so that's why the wind speed of this jet stream is lesser now this jet stream is observed over our country in the monsoon months which are june july august and september So if we were to fly from Chennai to Kolkata during monsoon we would be experiencing easterly wind because of this tropical easterly jet stream Now let's talk about a phenomena that is observed with jet streams and this is known as clear air turbulence So clear air turbulence is the turbulent movement of air masses in the absence of any visual clues such as clouds clear air turbulence is caused when bodies of air moving at different speeds meet like in this diagram also we can see that there is an air mass which is fast and there is an air mass that is slow and clear air turbulence occurs in the space that is between these two air masses one air mass is faster and the other air mass is slower clear air turbulence is caused by the vertical and the horizontal wind shear of jet streams All jet streams do not have clear air turbulence associated with them. Clear air turbulence occurs around the boundaries of jet streams because of the wind shears and it is strongest near or just below the jet axis on the cold side of a jet stream. Now I'll tell you why it's strongest on the cold side of a jet stream. Okay so we know that on the cold side the air molecules would be bigger as compared to the air molecules on the warm air side right on the cold air side the air molecules will be bigger because cold air is thicker so when a high speed wind moves these air molecules a lot of turbulence is created in the surrounding area and that turbulence is the clear air turbulence 
So the reason why clear air turbulence is stronger on the colder air side is because of the larger air molecules on the cold air side. Okay, so now we will look at a westerly jet stream in the northern hemisphere. So it's blowing from the west to the east with the north pole over here and the equator over here. So obviously it will have cold air to the north of it and warm air to the south of it. Okay, so now let's say there is an aircraft that is flying from the equator towards the North Pole. So we can clearly see that it will get winds from the left because of this jet stream. So we can conclude and say that when we are crossing a jet stream with outside air temperature decreasing, then we will experience winds from the left, right? Because that's what is happening in this situation. The outside air temperature is decreasing because we're going from an area of high temperature to an area of low temperature and the winds that we're experiencing is from the left. Okay, now there's another property of a jet stream that we should know. And this property says that the temperature along the core of a jet stream always remains constant. Okay, so around the jet stream, we have warm temperature and cold temperature but along the core of a jet stream, the temperature always remains constant. Okay, so this was everything about the jet streams. It's a very small topic. I hope you guys understood it well. Do let me know if you have any doubts, any questions and thanks for watching.